and welcome to All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. Jobs, 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 jobs and housing. Today we're going to talk about jobs and housing, and I have as my special guest, Greg McConnell. Greg, welcome to All well, About Community. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And how long have you been in this community? I uh, moved to California in 1985, formerly from the other Oakland, Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. D.C. <laughs> has changed over the years. In the last dec two decades, it has changed tremendously. They, Reminds you a little bit of Oakland, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. In the last two years, they've issued something like close to 10,000 building permits on new construction. Wow. You know, in just two years. Wow. And, and, and that's similar here in Oakland. Now, let me ask you. What is Jobs and Housing? So Jobs and Housing Coalition is a group of many of Oakland's major developers who, on the housing side, who came to build residential housing units when Jerry Brown was the uh, mayor of the 10K plan. Mm -hmm. And then we started formulating relationships with businesses, too, because if you have housing, you got to have jobs. If you got jobs, you got to have housing. And so we have a lot of major corporations in there, Kaiser, PG&E, Comcast, AT&T, and groups like that. Now, how are we doing with jobs? I know you just said jobs relate to housing, but you can't get a house unless you got a job. Well, that's right. And so if you read the statistics, they say that, you know, Oakland is doing really well with employment, that the employment unemployment rate is very low. And that may be true for a lot of the community, but it's not true for all of the community. It's not true. Let, let, let's face it, it's not true for African Americans in particular. And why is that, Greg? Well, that's, that's the rub. So when these developers come in and they say they want to put together a housing project like Oak No, mm -hmm. they say that they want to have local hire, they want to concentrate their effort to have at least 50% local hire. The problem is, when you go out, when they go out and look for local employees, those who are qualified got, have the skills already working. The ones who need the jobs don't have the skills. So one of the things that we are segued into is to create the Oakland Jobs Foundation. And the purpose of it is to search out good job training, life skill training programs. Uh, specifically the Men of Valor uh, that is run by uh, Bishop Bob. And, and uh, we're going to have him on later, that great bishop from uh, Oakland here. Well, I had to say his name before he said mine. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you didn't, he will get you, you know. But, bishop is a powerful man. But that's the truth of it. We have a lot of things happening in downtown Oakland, West Oakland, and now we're beginning to see things happen in East Oakland. Uh, yeah, but I know we are seeing things happen in terms of uh, some development, et cetera, but what about the jobs for African-Americans? Well, are, they, are they working on those projects? Well, see, that's... Or looking? Well, no. That, uh, well, there are some working on those projects, but not nearly at the number that we want, not nearly in ways that you can change whole communities around. And the reason for that... Yeah, I talk to all of these diversity specialists. They say if you want to do 50% or 20% local hire, you can't do it because there's not enough people in the pool ready to work. Well, what can we do to get them in the pool? We can identify those programs like the Men of Valor that does reentry uh, training. We can identify other kinds of job training programs. We've talked to uh, uh, Cypress Mandela, we're, we're looking all over the city to try to find out who really trains people, not, not, not who takes money. Right, but who trains. And, and we're going to uh, get uh, uh, more into that in, in a moment, but you know, Greg, we got to go to commercial, got to take a break. Don't touch that dial, don't even think about grabbing that remote. We will be right back with Greg McConnell. Oakland Jobs Housing Coalition. My name is Jameer Dixon and I'm a locating Mark Fieldman for PG&E. Most people in the community recognize the blue trucks as PG&E. My truck is something new, it's an A11 truck. When you call A11, I come out to your house and I mark out our gas lines and our electric lines to make sure that you don't hit them when you're digging. A11 is a free service. I'm passionate about it because every time I go on the street, I think about my own kids. They're the reason that I want to protect our community and our environment. And if me driving that truck means that somebody gets to go home safer, then I'll drive it every day of the week. Together, we're building a better California. 
Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. When we went to break, uh, I was talking with Greg McConnell. We were talking about jobs, uh, especially uh, African-American uh, getting jobs here in the Bay Area. But we were also talking about housing. And I note the old Oak Knoll Naval Facility uh, at uh, Sequoia Road and Mountain Boulevard. Uh, is being developed now, and I understand that you are involved in that as a representative of uh, SunCal? Yes. I, uh, Tell us about that and what it's all about. So, first of all, it's 918 uh, housing units. 908? Uh, that's huge! It's going to be one of the biggest projects Oakland has ever seen. Great. It's going to be transformative of the entire area. And then what happened was that people said, well, what about affordable housing? Well, mo most of that's, much of that's going to be market rate, but a couple of things occurred. The developer agreed to put $20 million into an affordable housing trust fund that the city could use. And there are five acres inside that whole project that are publicly owned. Mm -hmm. So Council Member Kaplan said, well, why don't we take our five acres and make affordable housing there? And Within the use... complex? Yes, sir. Okay. So it'll be, it'll be a mix at this point. And... It was approved of after a big fight, uh, 20 years in the making. The residents in the surrounding neighborhood have been trying to get this done. Larry Reed is the, the guy that gets all the credit, though, because Larry was just tenacious in making sure that happened. But there were some other good things that happened in Oak Knoll. Mm -hmm. I told you briefly about the Oakland Jobs Foundation and trying to create job opportunities. Now, when people talk about the Oakland Job Foundation, how can they find out more information about that? You have a website we or do, something like that? We Why do don't have you a tell website. them? Tell the, the community about that website. www.oaklandjobsfoundation.org. Uh, check it out. And uh, our executive director is in the audience today. Uh, she is available to talk to people. But, but here's, here, let me just tell you how that thing really works. Please do. See, when developers build stuff, they have to do community benefits. Mm -hmm. And all too often, you can ask Bishop when he comes up here next, all too often what happens is that these people want community benefits, but they just line their own pockets. And you never see any benefit, real benefit to the community. Well, they benefit themselves, That's right? right. Okay. That's right. So what we've done with the Oakland Jobs Foundation, we talk to developers and say, put money into a fund that is going to support training programs so that we can get more jobs for East Oakland residents, African Americans. And the foundation uh, is designed to do that? It's a 501c3. That's all it does. Okay. And when is it going to get started in terms of training? I'm anxious to see African Americans out there working. Well, it took a while for us to get through the IRS process of being uh, uh, designated a 501c3. We got that last month. We are now in the process of raising significant funds from all of the developers that we work with in the city. We want the city council to recognize that when somebody's supporting a group like the Men of Valor or somebody's supporting other job training programs, that they're making community benefit, not to hustle. That and who's going to do the training? I know it's important to raise the funds. As a matter of fact, without the funds, you can't do anything. But then once the funds are raised, who will do the training? Well, it won't be us, because I don't know how to train people. <laughs> all, I need, all, I know, all I know how to do is try to raise some money so well, that's that those a good people thing. who can that's do it That's a good thing. Can but have you, some resources. So you to will do be uh, subcontracting out with people who are capable of training people. I mean, really training them. We will identify programs, mm -hmm. and we will have them give us information about what they do, mm -hmm. their success stories, et cetera, because we don't just throw money away. Right. But there's a lot of good people that have been working <laughs> with us. Uh, Doug Blackshear is from the NAACP. So many people, have, it, when we started saying we wanted to do this, so many people just came up and said, man, we want to help you get this done. I got to tell you, when I first mentioned this to Larry Reed, I saw a tear in his eye. He said, I've been waiting. And Larry wait, normally doesn't cry. Somebody. He's very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, I, I, I've, 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 I, he said to me, I've been waiting for somebody to come along and do this forever. I've been tired of seeing developers come into town, spend millions of dollars collectively on stuff that does no good. And Larry's this done. Will. Larry's done a tremendous job, I think, in representing District 7, which I live in, and which I live right on Sequoia Road. We'll be overlooking that development and make 
make certain that it's uh, done well and that most of all that uh, there are jobs uh, associated with it. I wish we had more uh, time, uh, Greg. It's been absolutely great talking with you. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. And uh, remember this, no matter what you do, when you do it, or how you do it, in the final analysis, it is still going to be all about community. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. Thank you for joining us, and thank you, Greg. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Visit Lena Soul Food, a down-home, southern-style soul food restaurant where every meal is served and prepared with love. Whether you choose to dine in with us, reserve one of our private rooms, or perhaps you desire our catering, Lena Soul Food is located in the wonderful city of Oakland at 6403 Foothill Boulevard. Our business hours are 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and closed on Tuesdays. Give us a call at 510-957-5663. Lena Soul Food, where memories and southern-style meals are made. Hello and welcome to All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. I am so delighted today to have back as my guest, Bishop Bob Jackson. Bishop Bob Jackson, the senior pastor of Axel Gospel Church, one of the largest churches in Northern California and getting bigger. Uh, Bishop Jackson, uh, welcome to All About Community, a show that you started and then you humbly <laughs> let me join in. And I want to thank you for that. And you're doing an excellent job, sir. I'm so proud of you. Doing well, an excellent, well, excellent job. Well, welcome. And, and I want right up front to talk about uh, the uh, opening ceremony of the housing project on 94th and International Boulevard that you engineered. Tell the community about What's going on there? How did that happen? It took about eight years of planning and eight years of going around and around. But, but by the grace of God, we finally were able to build 59 units, of for all affordable housing, 59 units. And we had over 6,000 people apply for those 59 units. 6,000? 6,000 some plus. Uh, so the, the need for affordable housing in the city of Oakland is really high. But anyway, we built 59 units, one, two, and three bedroom. All of them uh, are, are uh, rented now, and uh, the, the, as a matter of fact, the tenants are moving in right now. So God blessed us to get the block across the street, and we're going to build 59 more units that's complementary to the ones we just built. So I really thank the Lord, more affordable housing, uh, so we'll be able to help low-income people and poor people stay in the city and uh, instead of being priced out and not able to be able to live uh, successfully in the city. I understand uh, uh, gentrification has taken its toll on Oakland in the last decade or so. Well, they figured out how to get rid of a lot of minority people, African Americans in particular, and that's raise the prices on these old houses as high as you can. And people that can't uh, afford them will simply have to go somewhere else. And they're moving to Antioch, they're moving to Stockton, they're moving to Sacramento. Sacramento and Stockton now are the lowest uh, property values that we have, the lowest properties that you can live in. So every day they're trying to leave them. We can't afford to let that happen. And you're fighting to keep them here. I'm fighting so I can keep them here, especially my members of the church. <laughs> I don't want to move it away. And, and, and you know, Bishop, that's so important. And I wish all churches would uh, take heed to this. If we don't have affordable housing here in Oakland, our members are going to be leaving, going elsewhere. And what does that mean? means you're losing membership. So it's in the interest of every church to rally around affordable housing right here in Oakland. And collectively, we have a lot of power, right, Bishop? That's right. And a lot of churches own property. And they own property. They own enough to build affordable housing on there. There's a couple of... Uh, uh, you know, opportunities to deal with the city and county. They have millions of dollars now for affordable housing and they're willing to work. The only problem is developers and, and uh, contractors are not that interested in affordable housing because they can't make any money off well, of it. Well, you know, that's true. Yeah. Now, now, uh, let's segue a little bit to the left and talk about another project of yours, Men of Valor. Yes. Tell us again about the Men of Valor. Men of Valor is a, is a program we set up around 25 years ago to work with the former, uh, formerly incarcerated men uh, that have been released from prison 
and uh, who have a desire never to go back again. And so we're working with them on skills. We, we re-institutionalize them as far as, or de-institutionalize them, I should mm -hmm. say, from their life, life of uh, being incarcerated. And we work with them on job skills, so they're able to, uh, even their GED, so they're able to get these jobs that are around, and uh, they're able to never go back to prison again. So, And, and that's important because uh, if you recall, we had Greg uh, McConnell on earlier Good man. and talking about uh, yeah. uh, housing and jobs. Yes. And so Men of Valor is instrumental to training people to get jobs That's exactly so what that we they do. can sustain themselves. Now, we're going to talk more about this. Uh, unfortunately, we do have to go to break, but fortunately, we're looking for commercials so that we can continue this program. Don't touch that dial. Don't even think about grabbing that remote. We will be right back with All About Community and Bishop Bob Jackson. Come check us out at KJ's Barber and Hair Creations, located 22126 Mission Boulevard in Hayward, California. We specialize in fades, tapers, dreads, weave coloring, and more. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Sundays by appointment zone. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at KJ's Barbershop. For more information, contact us at 510-690-9610. So come on down to KJ's Barber and Hair Creations. Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Bob Harris. And when we went to break, I was talking with Bishop Jackson. We were talking about the men of Bala. Uh, we had also talked about uh, housing here in Oakland, but now we're going to talk about the most precious assets we have in this city. Those assets are our children. Tell us about the OK program and how it relates to children. Yes, the OK program uh, deals with uh, middle school and high school African-American boys uh, that are struggling in school for the most part and uh, have already been programmed uh, at least, uh, you know, uh, position to drop out of school before graduating, at which we had a 60% dropout rate with African-American boys. So the OK program comes alongside of those boys. And the OK stands for what? Our kids. There you our go. Kids. Like our TV. Our kids. <laughs> there but, you and, go. And what happens is we have three police officers that mm -hmm. work in the OK program. Full time. Full time. But they're not there to arrest the boys. They're there to be big brothers. They're there to be mentors for the brothers. We have 251 boys in the program, and those boys are geared now for graduation, and even a lot of them looking for college uh, and it's, right now. It's focused uh, primarily out of which high school or high schools? It's, uh, it's out of middle schools, uh, West Oakland Middle School, okay. Frick Middle School, and also Elmhurst. And if somebody school. wants to get more information about uh, the uh, Our Kids uh, program, OK program, how would they get that information? They can call the church at, at 567-1300, 567-1300, and uh, ask for Gospel Church, and we can give you all the information that you would like. It is a 501c3 nonprofit tax-exempt corporation, and uh, it's a wonderful thing. And it thing. probably has a website, too, right? We, we do, uh, but... Call the number and you can get all of that. Because all right, call the I'm number. Not as quick oh, as I used to oh, that's be. okay. Or you can always quick. Google. <laughs> you know why I know? I've already Googled OK programs. And matter of fact, you can go right on there if I remember correct. And they got a big thing that says donate. donate. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's part of so that's you know, it. Unfortunately, we can't get any money from anybody. And you can't. Why not? not? These are it's, children. Mainly because it's dealing with African-American boys in particular. And uh, no one wants to give us any money because the system is designed to put our boys in prison. You kidding? That's all I can say. Now, you have been doing some work at Juvenile Hall with our juveniles? Absolutely. Juvenile Hall used to have 370-some kids in, in there. And today, last week, rather, they had 67 kids. 67 when they used to have 300? But if you would add that 251 <laughs> that we have in, men are, in the OK program... To the 67 that's there, you see where the 300 kids are. Wow. Our program is keeping those kids out of juvenile hall, got them focused on graduating from high school, and there's some so, there's some powers that be that don't want to see that. Well, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. You mean they're upset that they may be losing jobs out of juvenile hall they because you will no longer two, have enough kids out there? They would rather pay $200,000 a kid to lock them up than to pay $2,000 a kid to keep them out. That ain't right. Well, I'm trying to tell you. So we have to work with our kids, 
that's what OK stands for, our kids, in order to keep them out of the system, keep them out of going, becoming professional criminals, and keep them in school so they can become educated, marry my granddaughters, and be the kind of and men. And my daughter. And BMWs, black men working. Now, black again, men working, that's all right. right. Able to take care of it. Yeah. But you know, the community needs to, uh, in my opinion, rally more around what we're doing with our children and especially keeping them out of juvenile hall because yeah, once you get tainted with the criminal justice system, it just stays with you. No matter what you do, it just drags you down. It's absolutely true. And we could catch these kids before they become professional uh, criminals by intervening in their lives in middle school and even high school. We also work with Castlemont and McClymonds, and we're getting ready to pick up Fremont as a high school. So wherever the African-American boys are going uh, to school to be educated, the OK program is going to be there. And speaking of uh, McClymonds, I see they last week just won the state championship football. So if you're not going to McClamonts and, and you're interested in football and you're not at McClamonts, uh, obviously you're at the wrong place. So you go to McClamonts. McClamonts is a great school. It's, I, I want to put in a plug for Mac. Put in because plug, Mac, Mac put, is school of champions. Put in a plug for Warriors too because Mac is the owner of the Warriors as well and the Warriors is our team. Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so like, and Curry just did a great thing working with the team <laughs> over at Mac uh, with, by getting them the outfits that they needed uh, for, for you know to play in the sports, which yeah. is a great thing that he did from the Warriors. Yeah, the Warriors have been very supportive of uh, athletics. I just wish <clears> they'd <throat> give us some money for the OK program. Curry, if you're looking... Uh, I mean, uh, Steph Curry, please. If you're looking, sir, we can use some donations for the OK program. <laughs> and we can keep our boys focused on graduating from high school. But they they have supported the athletic pro, uh, programs here in Oakland, but they need to do more. They can do more, and we encourage them to do more. Uh, Bishop Jackson, I wish we had more time because it is just always fascinating to see you and, and, and to watch the passion the enthusiasm you have for our community, you have for our people, and especially for our young people. It has been a pleasure having you on this program. No matter what you do, when you do it, or how you do it, in the final analysis, it is still going to be all about community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. Thank you for joining us. LaKay Body Essentials. Pamper yourself with our whipped body butter. Our natural, luxurious body butter main ingredients is shea butter. Our body butter, body oils, and lotions will definitely increase healthier looking and smoother skin. We provide an overall relaxation experience from bath teas and soy candles. You can check us out on Facebook or Instagram at Le K Body Essentials. That's L E K Body Essentials. Hello and welcome to All About Community. My name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. Education. Malcolm X said it best when he said, Education is our passport to the future. Tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Today we are going to talk with an expert in education. Uh, sometimes people don't understand, and I shouldn't say sometimes, oftentimes people don't understand the difference between, for example, the Oakland Unified School District and the Alameda County Board of Education. Today, we're going to get a better understanding of those two entities, and, and, and especially from the county side. We've had the Oakland Unified School District on several times. Today, we have as our guest, Amber Childress. Welcome, Amber. Amber is a member of the Alameda County uh, uh, Board of Education, a young lady. How did you get elected uh, to um, that district, well, area two, I believe it is? You, yeah. you, you, you're young, you don't look like a politician. <laughs> um, well, I'm from Oakland. I was raised in Well, Oakland. that's a good thing. Yes, went to Oakland Public Schools. I'm a mom, and so my son's actually in high school, so look younger than I actually am. And I have always been really involved in school, even when I was a student. I knew- Where I'm were you a student? District 7, so E. Morris Cox, Elmhurst. Elmhurst, go the neighborhood. Well, let's, let's get it all out. <laughs> a success story from Cox. Yes. And Elmhurst. <laughs> Um, and was in the neighborhood to go to Castlemont, but um, mm -hmm. I actually ended up going to high school in Minnesota through the Better Chance program. Oh yeah, 
my feelings went to Casamon. A better chance. Rochelle <laughs> Lester. You ever heard of her? Yes. She's okay. The late <laughs> Rochelle Lester was just super with that program. Mm. So I I've always been interested in figuring out how I could do my part to improve mm -hmm. the schools in the flatlands of Oakland. Mm -hmm. And um, started working with nonprofits that are interested in supplementing that, that education mm -hmm. and also volunteering at schools like Castlemont and Frick. And then you sat to run for the Board of Education. Yes. How how did you make that decision? Um, so I was the marketing manager for a sc Oakland School Board um, okay. race in 2014, Salim Gilmore. I okay. worked on his um, campaign okay. and so got to meet folks like Greg McConnell mm -hmm. um, during that campaign and really got to better understand the political landscape in Oakland and what was going on with OUSD and education in general. And so I decided to make a decision. Do I continue to support candidates and um, elected school board members or do I run myself? You run yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what did you run on? Um, so I ran, um, my hashtag was kids before politics or okay. kids over politics. I think, I really think we need to try our best to take um, as much of the politics out of mm -hmm. school board um, matters because it, it really, it, it makes it cloudy and I think it takes us away from what we should really right. be working on. I, I agree with 100%. Why the county, why did you run for county board of super, uh, board of super, board of education rather than the Oakland Unified School District Board of Education. That was a choice. Yes, it was a choice. Um, well, I, I really like James Harris, who, um, <laughs> okay. who is the, the school board member for my district. Okay. And I thought that the county would be a better fit for okay. me. Now, how do they differ? They, they, they got, there has to be some difference between the two. Very different. Okay, tell us about <laughs> that. Educate the community about the County Board of Education. So on the, the county board, then there's also the County Office of Ed um, oh. as well. Okay, we got a lot to talk <laughs> yes, about. Yes, lots there. of layers. So on the county board, our primary functions are um, to serve as an appellant board when there's a dispute um, with an expulsion, um, an interdistrict transfer, or a charter school denial. So those are the three things that can come to us if a parent or the petitioner in case of a charter school, if they don't agree with the local school district's decision. Oh, okay. Now that's interesting. So if, if a child is disciplined in Oakland, for example, and is uh, kicked out, uh, that child or child's parents can appeal to the county? Yes. Wow. I didn't know that myself. And I'm supposed to be a lawyer. So, uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't know. <laughs> I know they don't know. That's why we have you here so that they will know. Uh, we're going to continue this conversation, but we got to go to break. Don't touch that dial. Don't even think about grabbing that remote. We will be right back with All About Community. Socialite Jewelry and Accessories is a fashion-forward accessory company. We offer everything from stylish frames to fabulous necklaces. Come check us out at our showroom in Berkeley. The address is 2703 7th Street, Suite 221 in the city of Berkeley. We also have a website, www.socialitejnda. Come out and shop for all of your fabulous needs. Hello and welcome back to All About Community. Again, my name is Robert L. Harris and I am your host. When we went to break, uh, I was talking with uh, Amber Childress, who represent Area 2 of the Alameda County Board of Education. And actually, I'm learning a whole lot about the County Board of Education that I did not know. So Amber, thank you for educating us and the community. And if <coughs> If someone wanted to find out more information that obviously we won't have time to give them, can is there a website or something they can go to? Yes, the website is acoe.org, and that stands for Alameda County Office of Ed. And there's a ton of information on there, both about the Office of Education and also the board. Now let's talk about the Office of Education, and if we have time, we'll get back to the board so we can find out uh, more specifically What's the difference, if any, between the Office of Education and the Board of Education? 
Okay. So the Office of Education, um, we, we actually are our own school district. In addition to providing services for the local school district, we have our own schools. So you mean there are schools in the, those must be in the unincorporated areas or something? No. So like Butler at Juvenile Hall, that mm -hmm. school is run oh, by the County Office okay. of Ed. Um, Camp Sweeney, right above oh, Juvenile yeah. Hall. Wilmot Sweeney. <laughs> yes. Um, there's, we also have Hayward Community School. So for kids who've been expelled out oh, of their okay. local districts, they attend there. And we also are one of the few counties in California that still has a school for teen parents. Oh, okay. And so because that funding was cut several years ago, but it's, it's such an important population. Mm -hmm. Um, and service that we provide that um, the superintendents, former and current, um, have fought to keep that program alive. And those are out of the Office of Education? Yes. And, and, I, they, and they are <coughs> all around the county. So mm -hmm. some of our schools are in Oakland. How many schools are, you have, approximately? Nine. nine. I believe nine. Oh. And each one, I assume, has its own uh, bureaucracy, like principals and stuff? Yes. <laughs> but all all flows out of Alameda County Office of Ed. Right, and, and they all report than... into the county, uh, similar to in Oakland Public School District, they would port, report into the superintendent. Yes. Oh, wow, that, that is fascinating. Now, what about the board itself? What does it do? Okay, so in addition to um, serving as an appellant board, we review and approve the budget for the County Office of Ed. And so, um, and we, our county superintendent approves budgets for the local school district. So that's, that's something that I want to make clear because the public doesn't necessarily understand that. Difference. Well, I don't understand it either because I heard uh, one of our local school districts, which I will not name, <laughs> had something close to a 10 or $15 million deficit. Mm -hmm. uh, so you all approve that? The county superintendent will approve or approves local school district budgets. So when that school district presented their, their grade mm -hmm. um, earlier this year, the superintendent was the one that said, they reviewed it and said, no, here's, oh, here's okay. the revised rating. Oh, okay, so the, the local school district submits it to the county uh, superintendent, yes. and then he or she will review it, and they say, uh-uh, I don't like this, and then they can <laughs> send it back? They, they will submit a new rating or a new grade. Oh, they give yes. them a grade? Yes. Oh, so they, can't, they, they just can't say. Uh, it has to be reviewed and. and, and, <laughs> and okay, checked okay. Off. and checked off. You <laughs> yes. give them ABC or something like that? Yes. Okay. Anything else about the um, County Board of Education that would be of interest to uh, our audience to help them better understand what goes on there? What about curriculum and all that stuff? Um, well, within just for all of our schools or for particular schools? Yeah, what the role, if any, that the county plays? So the county, we really are there to, to fill in the gaps that are not being served by the local school district. So in mm -hmm. addition to the programs that I already mentioned, we also have services for foster youth. Okay. Um, so these communities of kids that, that either can no longer be server, ser, um, served in their mm -hmm. local school district or it's just not enough of them for um, that local school district to be able to provide the services for them. And you have been on the board uh, for how long? Since June 2016. Are you enjoying it? I am. Are you I having really fun? Am. I am. It's a lot of work, but I'm really enjoying it. And I, I have enjoyed uh, chatting with you. I wish we had more time to talk with uh, Ms. Childress. She is the elected representative for Area 2, Alameda County Board of Education. Uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Ms. Thank Children. Uh, no matter what you do, when you do it, or how you do it, in the final analysis, it is still going to be all about community. My name is Robert L. Harris, and I am your host. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>